Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, glory be to Jesus Christ. Glory forever. Today is we commemorate and celebrate the Holy Pentecost, the descent of the Holy Spirit. This feast is, of course, celebrated each year on the 50th day after the great and holy feast of Pascha, and 10 days after the feast of the Ascension of Christ. And of course, the feast is always celebrated on the Sunday. This feast commemorates the descent of the Holy Spirit upon the Apostles on this day of Pentecost, which is also a Jewish tradition. Now a little study about the Jewish traditions. In the Jewish language, Pentecost is called Shavuot, the Feast of Weeks as listed in the books of Leviticus chapter 23 verses 15 through 17. If you want to read those after a bit. During this feast of Shavuot, Leviticus 23 tells us there is a wave offering of two leavened breads. Not on leaven, but leavened breads. Those loaves are symbolic of Jews and Gentiles together. Interesting, isn't that? The Old Testament Feast of Pentecost occurred 50 days after the Passover, the commemoration of the exodus of the Israelites from captivity and slavery in Egypt in celebration of God's gift of the Ten Commandments to Moses and on Mount Sinai. It also celebrates the establishment, the establishment of the New Testament Church through the preaching of the apostles and the baptism of the thousands who on that day believed in the gospel message of salvation through Jesus Christ. The feast is also seen as a culmination of the revelation of the Holy Trinity. In the new covenant of the Messiah, the Passover events take on its new meaning. The celebration of Christ's resurrection, the passing over from death to life and from the earth to heaven. The exodus of God's people from the sinful world into the eternal kingdom. The New Testament Pentecost is also fulfilled and made new by the coming of the new law with the descent of the Holy Spirit upon the, the disciples of Christ who were gathered in that upper room. I guess there's about 120 there and the fire went into the cloven tongues as we heard in the epistle went into the apostles and they were filled with power and Jesus had told them to do that tarry in Jerusalem after his ascension for ten days and I will ask the Father and he will send the Comforter the Holy Spirit as we read in the book of Acts this morning when the day of Pentecost had come they were all gathered together in one place showing unity and suddenly a sound came from heaven like the rush of a mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them tongues of, as of fire, distributed as resting upon each one of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Christ's promise to his disciples came on that day of Pentecost. As the apostles received the power from on high, and began to preach and bear witness to Christ as the risen Lord, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Traditionally, this moment has been called the birthday of the New Testament Church. Hopefully, 
we experience this fullness readily, if not every day of our Christian life. Can we too experience the miracle of the Pentecost firsthand? St. Seraphim the Seraph teaches us in the plainest language that the purpose of the Christian life is the acquisition of the Holy Spirit. Not just as monastic, but all Christians should be like savvy spiritual merchants who know how to trade and multiply the spiritual talent that was implanted in them at their baptism, just as rich men constantly concerned with how to hold on to their wealth they've already amassed and how to add to it steadily day by day, physical versus spiritual. We should have a clear sense as faithful, baptized, orthodox Christians just what our treasure is and how we can always be adding to it. You know, at chrismation, you're sealed after baptism. The newly illumined is, goes right into the mysterium or sacrament of chrismation and is sealed with holy chrism into the Holy Spirit. And I've heard people say, well, yeah, I've been chrismated, but I still act like the devil. So what's that? Was that just a mistake or is that just a... Uh, well, the issue is this. You got all the Holy Spirit when you were chrismated, but the Holy Spirit, the Spirit didn't get all of you. And so we have to do what the Lord said. Deny thyself, take up thy cross, and follow me. And that's how the fullness of the Holy Spirit comes to you. Now in Pentecost, there are some symbols that I want to briefly talk about. Fire, one of them, represents the Holy Spirit filling the apostles with courage and enthusiasm to share Christ's story. It also recalled the fiery tongue that descended on the apostles when they received the Holy Spirit. You know, there was a change. Peter, who denied the Lord, during that mock trial. All of a sudden now, since he's been filled with power from on high, goes out in the streets of Jerusalem and preaches Christ through the prophet Joel. Boldness, all of them had boldness now and they didn't care about their life. All they cared about was sharing the good news of Christ. Now another element is water represents the new life and the commitment made at baptism. So we have the water, we have fire, but we have water, and also there's a dove. Now we think of the dove through theophany, the epiphany of the Lord, but represents the Holy Spirit descending on Jesus like the dove during his baptism, as I said, but it also symbolizes peace. The dove can also represent the church and the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit. No longer are the disciples huddled together in the supper room, for the fear of the Jewish authorities, as they were when Jesus visited them after his resurrection, in resurrection power. You know, he came in through the door, was locked, he came in and showed himself. And the first thing he says to them, peace be with you. Now we see them in the streets preaching to the people with one voice and great courage, the truth of the new life in Christ Jesus. The fulfillment of all that God had promised Israel and the world in his great love and mercy now is culminated in this gift of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. Mankind's effort at unity were prideful. Let's go back and do a history lesson here. Seeking to take the place of God as manifested in the Tower of Babel. And they were building this tower. They wanted to reach heaven. To humble mankind and teach them to fear God and follow him so man could live and thirst after the salvation in him. God divided the tongues and they couldn't communicate with each other and they all dispersed. But now at Pentecost, God calls all mankind back into communion with him. The disciples were given power from the Holy Spirit to speak in different languages so all the people could hear the good news. And what is that good news? That you don't have to die in your sins and trespasses. You can trust and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now you can. 
the Holy Spirit was given. They went out and they preached in the language of the people who visited Jerusalem because remember the Jewish celebration of Shavuot, which is the Feast of Weeks, Jerusalem was packed with people and so the Holy Spirit gave these guys, these apostles, language so they could communicate the gospel of Jesus Christ and they could take it back to their homeland and tell them what happened in Jerusalem. This communion is manifested not in man's effort and unity, but by the gift of God, the seal of the Holy Spirit given to each one of us at our chrismation. The Holy Spirit leads us to unity in the faith of Christ's holy church and to understanding of God's truth, just as Christ promised before his holy ascension, nevertheless I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper, the paraclete in Greek, will not come to you. But if I depart, I will ask the Father, and he will send you the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth, and he will guide you into all truth. What a marvelous gift we have been given from Holy Pentecost. By the Holy Spirit, we are indeed led into all truth. And so you say, well, what is truth? You just look at Jesus. Jesus is the embodiment of all truth. Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth. And I'm the life. And no one comes to the Father but through me. John 14, 6. You'll, all of us know that scripture, I hope. Indeed, this is what it meant to be an Orthodox Christian. We receive him who is the truth by being born again. As Christ says to Nicodemus, through water and the Spirit, without which Christ says, we may not enter into the kingdom of God. And there's, a, there's that bone of contention. You must be baptized of water and the Holy Spirit. Christ tells us that. He told it to Nicodemus that night at that secret meeting. Now St. John the baptizer, the forerunner, prepares the way, saying, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. And it happened. This is the baptism and chrismation, the sealing of which St. Paul speaks, and which he himself received, from Ananias when he was in Damascus. In him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of thy salvation, in whom also having believed you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. And that comes out of Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13. And I hope you can take you know, these little scripture references after this message, you know, later today. Uh, go look up these passages in the, New, in the New Testament and, uh, and see that the beautiful gift that God has given us. Pentecost, which we celebrate every year, is for our own personal renewal of our own baptism into Christ and the sealing by the Holy Spirit. It's an, maybe it's a time of inventory. Am I doing everything that I'm supposed to be doing for God? I've been given all the power but that power can't be corrupted. As soon as you try to use that power in, in a wrong way, it's gone. It's shut down. So later on, we'll have the kneeling Vespers service, the Vesper, you know, like Vespers and kneeling service. And we haven't knelt for a long time. You know, at the Pascha, the Christ is risen. We haven't. But now there will be three kneeling prayers at Vespers tonight. It's good because it lets us focus on who we are with Christ, the Holy Trinity. And as we read these prayers to, today, later today, may they minister to us and remind us what great gift we've been given by Christ, the Holy Trinity, by giving us the power of the Holy Spirit. 
salvation from here on will no longer be solely the gift of the Jews. Through the works of the Holy Spirit, the Gentiles will respond to the gospel message of the new life in Christ, participating in the life of the one true God in three persons. And that's why I said at the beginning, when they celebrate Shavuot, Leviticus 23, they have two barley loaves leavened, which is a picture of mankind, Jews and Gentiles together, the unity of the Holy Spirit. So, as I said, the people who were present at Pentecost or Shavuot in Jerusalem got to hear the good news of salvation in their own tongue. They all hear in their own language. The one thing that they can unite all mankind together in a community of believers, not based on prideful human ambitions, but on communion with God and life, the true life itself. Life in the Spirit after Pentecost is manifested then not in chaos, confusion, but always in order. Think about that. Order in the church, not chaos. Despite we have many languages in, in this world, different cultures, background, geography and all that, but it's amazing when you come into an Orthodox church, whether you're from wherever and you visit an Orthodox church as an Orthodox Christian, even though you maybe don't, don't understand the language, you know about the divine liturgy and you know what's going on. But it helps to be in the vernacular, of course. The unity of common Orthodox faith is seen in the Apostles' communal gathering. They broke bread together. They prayed together. The diversity of gifts of the Holy Spirit, wisdom, knowledge, faith, healing, teaching, prophecy, language, are depicted in their differing gestures. The gospel writers are shown gospel in hand, while the others with scrolls sharing their gift of teaching. This study of the icons of the saints that have gone before us. Beautiful stories beautiful witnesses in the icons of what's happening to that that person that saint or that apostle in the icon of course the holy spirit is identified in our, in our holy spirit is identified in the icon of the pentecost as cloven tongues of fire which went in to the apostles also that has happened to us at chrismation we get the new life, newly illuminated baptism, receiving the mysterium of chrismation by using that holy chrism to anoint the believer, sealing him or her into the Holy Spirit. So today God is proclaimed and manifested as a Holy Trinity, a communion, a relationship of truth and love that you and I are invited to join in. But we got to have humility. We can't have any pride like guys and girls at the Tower of Babel. And it's one message. The apostles preached the message in Jerusalem on that day, but it hasn't changed. It's unified. The Holy Church today proclaims the same truth through the centuries. It's the same message. Christ Jesus is the the answer to all of our issues of life. If you just be humble and believe in Christ and let him take over your life. And that's an, it may be a whole life process of denying thyself and taking up thy cross and following Christ. But he is the antidote for sin. He is the antidote for all of our problems we have in our life. And he wants us to turn to him and seek his wisdom and his healing. He's, he dwelt among us for 33 years, healing the sick, the lame, the lepers, and all that. And he can heal us too, spirit, soul, and body. 
So Christ is stronger than anything we're going through. And it's interesting that the Lord came in the flesh through the Holy Theotokos and dwelt among us and showed us, hey, I'm, I can have in my flesh, I can cry, I can laugh, I can hurt, you know, and, and so he has total revelance. He can connect with each one of us because he knows what you're going through. He can't say that Christ is up in heaven and he doesn't understand our plight. Yes, he does. Trust, trust him and believe. So I'll close this message with this beautiful prayer that we sing now. Until it's, we're, I say ordinary time now, we've gone through the Paschal season, the Ascension, and now Pentecost, and we sing now all the time, O Heavenly King, the Comforter, the Spirit of Truth, who art everywhere present and fill us all things, treasury of blessing and giver of life, come and abide in us and cleanse us from every impurity and save our souls a good one. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, glory be to Jesus Christ. Glory forever.